deadly tarantula girl coming to you from my private serpentarium. Welcome tonight to bring you a spider video. What was that? Oh, that's right. Tonight we're going to be talking about the spider ball python debacle. Those of you who are into the African python regius and all of its wacky morphs. You've probably heard a lot about the ball python spider gene recently. And so I'm gonna show you a couple specimens and we're gonna talk a little bit about the history and the dangers of the spider gene tonight. Let's get started. Now that I've wrangled a couple of my spider ball pythons, let's take a look. This first beautiful specimen is an orange dream bumblebee, which is carrying the spider gene. Now, I would like to point out that a lot of people are talking about the animals that are carrying the spider gene and how deformed and maladaptive they are, that they have terrible head wobble, kinks that they're not eating, they shouldn't be reproduced. And this animal was reproduced by Lone Star Reptile. It is a yearling from 2018. This is an F1 orange dream from Ozzy Bowitz. Love both of those guys. Um, Earl from Lone Star and Ozzy Ahmad from Ozzy Bowitz. You can see that this animal is in perfect health. It eats very well. It's growing nicely. I have zero trouble with this snake. Although there have been some ball pythons carrying the spider gene that do have some problems. I won't even say that it's neurological because I don't know that that's been proven. Most of them do not. Let's take a look at another one. Onwards. Now let's take a look at a fire bee. This animal was reproduced, I believe in 2017. So it's a two year old from Fantasy Reptile out of Colorado. And you can see again, this animal has no issues whatsoever. So to give you a little history on the fire gene in the late nineties, there was an import of uh, normal ball pythons because there were no morphs at that time on the market. There had been albinos found, which people were toying with those genes a little bit, but there were not thousands of morphs. There were not even a few morphs. There might have been a couple morphs at this time, but a spider was one of the first. It came in to a pet store in Los Angeles from an importer in with a big lot of normal balls. This one looked a little bit different. The owner of the pet store kind of saw something unique. He um, kind of started asking around a little bit, decided to hold on to it. Kevin McCurley of New England Reptiles or Nerd got wind of it. Lindy Johnson of Freedom Breeder, both super stand-up guys who've been in it for a long time, stood the test of time. Long story short, Lindy ended up being allowed to purchase that first spider ball python from that pet store owner about a year down the road. Um, Kevin McCurley, uh, after that, was the first one to reproduce the spider gene and prove that it was actually a dominant gene, although that wasn't proven definitively until later. So one thing that makes the spider gene unique is that a lot of mutations that cause ball python color morphs are either recessive or codominant. This gene is actually dominant and therefore there is no super form. For example, if you have a Mojave morph, which is beautiful, but not super dramatically different from a normal morph, and you breed two Mojaves together, what you get is the super form, which is a super Mojave, which looks totally different. Let's take a look at a super Mojave. If you breed two Mojaves together, you get a super Mojave, which is a blue-eyed leucistic. Now this one also happens to be a black head, which is why she has the gray or silver head. And so that is an example of two snakes who together reproduce either something far more dramatic or sometimes completely different. 
The spider ball python is one, like the pinstripe, that does not have a super form, which makes it a little bit unique. This beautiful super mojave was produced by Mr. Ray Page out of Houston, Texas, whom I also love. Now, one of my uh, spiders that I'm most proud of is my LSR fire, which is the Lone Star Reptile Fire, and this is also a spider. So it's an LSR fire spider. Um, this was actually gifted to me by Earl of Lone Star Reptile, and sadly she's actually far more beautiful than this, but she's getting ready to go into shed. And it seems like the animals know that when you're going to film with them. We've been waiting and waiting for the stars to align. And then of course she is going to go blue, which is a big bummer because she is gorgeous. If you would like to see the video where I received this mail, check that out. When last time I was in Texas for the NARBC Arlington show, I went and visited them at Lone Star Reptile and Earl was so generous to gift me with this LSR fire. I will link that video below. You will get to hear the story of the genetics behind the LSR fire. He was the first to have it and there are only a few in the country at this time. So that is exciting and he is gorgeous. Now, to take a look at a snake with some issues, which happens, this is a beautiful little boy. This is a lesser calico. Now when he hatched out, he was just really messed up. His head was totally twisted and he had kinks and he looked like he was stargazing all the time. He had a terrible sense of balance. However, I'd like to point out that this animal is not carrying the spider gene. Things just happen sometimes. This came from a very reputable breeder. The every other clutch, every other animal that hatched out of this clutch was totally normal. So as he's getting older, he's getting better. But if we just watch him move around for a little while, you might see that he's had some problems. He's growing, he's feeding well. This is not an animal that I thought should have been euthanized. This animal was given to us by the breeder because I still thought he had a right to live, as did the breeder, which is why that breeder did not consider euthanizing him. But he was not going to sell him because he had some genetic mutation, birth defect, whatever you want to call it. But I'd like to point out, out of all the spiders that I have, none of them have any issues. If I did ever have a spider with an issue, I've never seen a spider that was so deformed that it couldn't eat or uh, right itself. Some people think that they have such a terrible sense of balance that if they get flipped upside down, they can't roll over. I've never seen that. And I have seen thousands of reptiles. I've been doing this for many, many, many years. Hey, little boy. And I'm not saying it can't happen. What I am saying is it can happen with any morph, any genetic, any animal. I mean, we've all seen pictures of the occasional two-headed animal. That's usually a total anomaly. That has very little to do with genetics or environmental care or anything like that. Statistically, some animals with the spider gene have been more likely to uh, be born with some type of birth defect. But actually, this animal looks very close to normal now. He's doing very well. Somebody could maybe consider that a slight head wobble. He looks good. You can tell he has a meal in his body. So I would like to go on the record saying there have been a few people, well, first of all, there's been one show in the UK that actually banned the sale and trade, the one expo, not nationwide, of anything with the spider gene. Spain has banned all ball pythons, and I don't think that has anything to do with the spider gene. Um, a few small YouTubers have come on the record recently saying terrible things about the spider gene and why they're so against it. And I have to say that I disagree. I'll say that as a matter of fact, I disagree. The several people that I have spoken to in interviews about it 
a mod from Ozzy Bowens, who I have to say would know what he's looking at. Kevin McCurley of New England Reptiles, who has produced over a hundred thousand ball pythons. Brian Bartek is not opposed to the spider ball python. These are men who have, they don't need the spider gene. They love the spider gene. They believe in the spider gene. The spider gene can create so many beautiful, amazing morphs. If we were to remove the spider gene from the ball python hobby, I think it would be a terrible loss. If ever I had an animal that had a birth defect, that is an animal that I would raise and love and grow, but never enter into my breeding program. I might even gift it to someone as a pet, which I have done before. I had a red tail boa that was brought to me through animal control and some other things. They, the vet who examined it didn't notice and animal control didn't notice that it had some kind of cyst on its spine. That animal stayed with me for a year or two and then there was a family who really wanted a large pet snake who I knew was competent. That animal was gifted to them as a pet. I did not make any money off of that. That animal deserved to live its life to the fullest. It did not appear to be in pain. However, that's not an animal that I would have kept with my red tails to enter into my breeding program. What am I saying? I'm saying we have a responsibility to only be spreading legitimate knowledge and information that is justified. People who are going on the record who may or may not really know what they're talking about should probably speak carefully because other people who may be very novice keepers are watching you, obviously they're listening to you, and I don't think that we need to do anything to put the reptile hobby in a far more negative light because we as reptile keepers are already on a slippery slope with people thinking our animals are dangerous, deadly, nasty, dirty, evil. I mean, there is so much negative stigma against reptiles. We need to band together to make sure that the information that we're passing along is accurate and correct and that ultimately the welfare of the animals as well as our rights as Americans are being defended. Sorry I couldn't show you any just regular spiders. I actually let those go to my friend uh, Ray Page, my perfectly healthy spider ball pythons. Ray Page out of Houston, he is breeding those for me with his animals because he just really loved them and so I said sure take them with you. Have fun. Give me some babies in the future. But you did get to see several totally normal genes along with another defective animal that in my mind has grown out of a lot of its problems in less than a year. This animal hatched out probably in June of 2018 and here we are in April of 2019. And that animal is growing and thriving very well. Again, not carrying the spider gene. I hope you guys like this one. I hope this wasn't too confusing of a ramble. I hope you got a little bit of the history of the ball python. I want to thank Kevin McCurley, Brian Barczyk, and Lindy Johnson for all that they do. Ahmad from Ozzy Bowitz, Earl from Lone Star, Ray Page, Isaiah Phillips out of Colorado and everybody else that I've worked with. So many amazing breeders, so many amazing people. Thank you to you guys who are reproducing quality animals, educating the public and just being amazing. I hope you guys liked this one. If you have any more questions about the spider ball pythons, you can comment them below or email me at deadlytarantulagirl at yahoo.com. What I do want to see is for you to comment your favorite spider ball python morph in the comment feed. I hope you guys like this one and I'll see you next time.